Here are some tips and tricks on Hampton Court Palace. Today we're going to be exploring Hampton Court Palace just outside of London, England. If you are new here, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. We're going to be giving out all of the best tips so that you can enjoy your trip here. There's lots to discover, so let's get going. Make sure you guys, when you first get here, stop over by the shop there. You. Audio guide is free and included. Speaking of tickets, let's talk about ticket prices. They're right here on the screen. Things to keep notice is that peak season are during like weekends and holidays. Off peak is considered midweek, which is when we went. Another thing to note is if you have any accessibility issues, you can absolutely take advantage of visiting this place. There is an elevator they'll take you to, and there's also that free ticket for the care companion. We were able to get through most parts. So the place that we obviously wanted to start and where it's recommended to start are King Henry VIII's apartments, and you start in the Great Hall. Visiting Hampton Court Palace has been on my bucket list. I absolutely love English history. Being in the Great Hall was just amazing. You can actually see one of the crests left over from Henry and Anne that did not get destroyed after she was beheaded. Each of the queens had a really neat little section just like this that gave a little history and actually shined a really positive light on each of them, a little bit more of a modern view and scape to this. Um, something to keep in mind is that this palace is actually kind of two in one so you have the Tudor side like you're going to see for the most part of this video and then you're also going to see the renovated side after the stewards the Hanoverians took over they renovated part of this palace because the old Tudor side was known to be kind of old-fashioned at that point under French influence they wanted it to be modernized but I gotta say, I really love the Tudor side. It just shined a whole new light on this history for me. And one of my favorite pieces that I couldn't wait to see, which will be coming up here, is heading down the haunted hallway, which is rumored to be haunted by Henry's fifth wife, Catherine Howard. And now it's time to head to the haunted gallery. For those of you that are not familiar, Catherine Howard was like 17. He was in, I think, like his 50s and was found guilty of adultery and treason. And when she was arrested, she broke free and ran down this hallway to try to get to this chapel right here where Henry was in, par uh, in prayer to beg for her life. So there's people that said they've seen and felt a ghostly presence. I will leave that up to you. Needless to say, though, it was really cool. But you can't miss this room in the corner, though. I won a challenge. What? After all these years of faithful service to my king and country, I have no trace. I read it here. You have said you would take arms against the king yourself if he did not obey you at your wishes. Never! How to be loyal in this place? You will put another Howard into the king's bed. I swear from the hell I am in, I pity her. As you can see, that room is just on the corner. This is what's behind that chapel. You weren't allowed to film, so I quickly shut off my camera. But the portraits in the haunted gallery are really cool. This one is a recreation. This portrait is elsewhere. But from here, we made our way back to the more quote-unquote renovated side where the stewards the hanoverians put their touch on it the last reigning monarch that used this as a royal residence was george ii in fact george iii actually never even set foot in this palace and in 1851 queen victoria conferred the palace on the british government it is so wild to see the differences from each side of the palace they recommend, like I mentioned earlier, you start with the Tudor side and end with this side. I can absolutely agree with that and highly recommend that's the way that you do this. This was during Thanksgiving week here in the States. Um, we absolutely felt like we had it to ourselves. So after going through here, there is a place to eat. This is actually near where the kitchens were for Queen Elizabeth. She had her kitchen separate from where her father did. But there are many places to eat at Hampton Court Palace. Just make sure you check the website for the times for when you are visiting. That is extremely important because some of the stuff is seasonal. There was even a little Christmas ice skating rink out front when we were there. So make sure you pay attention to the website. 
just on the way to King Henry VIII's kitchens. This is one of the big sites on the Tudor side. It is mind blowing how huge these kitchens were. Thinking of the amount of food they were doing without the tools that we had today is just incredible. And then when we came into this room, they actually were roasting this particular beef and it is split amongst the employees at the end of the day. It's not served at one of their many restaurants, even outside the kitchens. And that is how we finished our day at Hampton Court Palace. Now, the last piece of advice I have is you can get here via train or by car. Take the train. We did the car here and it took forever and it was a bit of a hassle. Take the train. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you in the next one.